Welcome back to The Big Show, talking to the big stars, and it's always nice to meet an old mate, Jason Donovan, how are you? Good afternoon, how are you? Yeah, I'm alright. I'm normally plugging CDs and you being gorgeous. Today we're plugging a musical, who'd have thought? Well, Jason Donovan and musicals do hold hands, um, but, uh, you know, I feel pretty settled in this show now. It's been going for me for nearly eight months, so, uh, um, you know, long... um, I can't wait for my holiday, (laughs) basically. (laughs) So that happens pretty soon. How do I stand if I say I love this show? Uh, You stand pretty much amongst 1,600 people that see the show every night, and most of them stand, exactly. You're right, at the end. Um, You know, it's uh, it's a pretty feel-good sort of musical. Um, One could argue that it's certainly not Disney, um, you know, in that sense, and it ain't Mamma Mia, but it has the same feel-good factor as as, as both of those sort of shows that I've just mentioned. It's Australian, it's based loosely on the film, um, you know, and it has some great songs, and um, I Will Survive, MacArthur Park, you know, Finally, these are sort of disco um, anthems um, with a gay twist to it, I suppose. Um, and, you know, essentially it, it, it is a story of three misfits, really, with a heart, you know. And I play a character called Mitzi Tick, who basically harbours a secret, and that secret is that he has a child, and slowly the story unfolds from there. It's a great show. It's camp, and it's uplifting, and it's a load of nonsense. And God, do we need a show like this at this time. Uh, yeah, one could argue definitely it's all of those um, things. And, I, and I'm... You know, I think for me, I'm proud to be part of something that is Australian first and foremost. It gives me an opportunity to sing. Um, it gives me an opportunity to act and um, play a character that I think has sort of, you know, quite diversity, um, you know, and and bring essence of myself to the character, which is, you know, um, someone that you want to love as well. Um, you know, hopefully people want to love me. Um, but I, I think uh, my wife certainly does <laughs> and my children do. Um so you know, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm thrilled to be part of a great Australian product, and and you know, for me personally, um, there's very few times in your life you get to open a show. Um, Joseph really was the last show that I opened in the West End, um, and that story has been told and that history has been told well let's hope that Priscilla has the same sort of um, legs and if not the same legs at least a different loincloth uh, and possibly a few more wigs and a bit of glitter. You know all about radio now because you've got your own radio show and you're good at this interviewing stuff and I'm going to make a mistake now because I'm going to be negative and you shouldn't really this early on because you could walk out. I I didn't really like you in this nor Joseph because I just end up feeling inadequate and I know the lady I'm with is going to look at you then look at me and suddenly I'm not enough, not enough man. Uh, You're talking about your own personal... um uh, Self worth. Yeah, I mean, you don't wear a lot in either of those shows, Josie. Right. For all this, and and they're looking at you with all the right bits in the right places, right. and there I am dangling like stalactites. Yeah. Well, thank you. It's a sort of a back. No, I don't mean it as a compliment. <laughs> yeah. No, I really don't. Well, I'm, I'm confused <laughs> about where this is going. Um, but I can only say to you, I'm sorry. I I don't see myself as anyone special. Um, you know, I I still have the same concerns and worries when I go on stage each night. Um, what I do is a profession that I love. Yes, I keep myself fit. I look after myself, you know, I, I eat the right foods. Um, I'm, I'm playing a sport at the moment and I'm playing at the top level of the sport, you know, and I have to maintain a certain amount of fitness to be able to deliver what you're saying, which is, um, you know, things that sort of turn people on, I suppose. Yeah, they're um, going to give me the role, are they? Uh, well, I don't know. It depends on whether you can act <laughs> and sing, but I'm sure there's some auditions <laughs> up for various roles at at, at, at uh, coming up at the moment but uh, look this show is for everybody Um, you know one could argue it's probably not for the little kids but um, certainly you know I think um, it crosses a lot of audience boundaries and you know I think we're probably got we're about 250 shows in and we've had a standing ovation every night so you know I'm proud of it Colour My World I just think it's so brilliantly done in this it's camping over the top but it's got real heart like most of the story yeah, Colour My World is written by a guy called Tony Hatch. Uh, you might know who Tony Hatch is. Uh, he wrote the theme tune for Neighbours uh, and managed to slip one in whilst I wasn't looking into this show. So to speak. Yeah, I mean, th- this show, this this musical is a concoction of... Uh, concoction? 
Maybe that's the word. I don't know. Never thought about it. Too Was that much. Freudian concoction? Oh, <laughs> maybe concoction. 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 I'll, I'll excuse myself. I'm Australian. I can get away with it. Um, the show it marriages many different tunes. And it, unfortunately, um, because ABBA has such a wonderful, successful musical down the road, we don't, uh, we're not allowed to um, dive into their back catalogue. But uh, there are songs like, um, as I say, finally, I will survive in this one, Colour My World. Colour My World from Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which is on here at the Palace. The big star, of course, is Jason Donovan. But it's actually a kind of a double-hander, this, because there's you and another guy that I was lucky enough to talk to about six months ago, and you do just steal the show, both of you. It's an ensemble piece. Yeah, it is an ensemble piece. And, and uh, you know, God bless the understudies who do a brilliant job, um, you know, but the, but the dynamic between uh, Oliver uh, and Tony and myself is you know is 250 shows strong um and it's an interesting chemistry because you know we're different people and i'm sure if they're all in the room at the moment they would say exactly the same thing but essentially there's a bit of a you know there's a bit of fire for us on stage um eight shows a week is tough though you know i i, I can honestly say to you uh that pace is something that i think you can only do for a certain amount of time and you've done it for a while now. I mean, how long are you going to be in it before you have to just take a break? I'm, I'm contracted for a year, and we still are not to know whether uh, it's going to go beyond that. It certainly won't be long after that that I leave because I just don't think I can give it. Um, at, again, at eight shows a week for a year, you, you, you know, you start to repeat yourself too many times and, you, you know, things go a little crazy. Notwithstanding the fact that, you know, I have a family at home and, and I, I always seem to be going against the traffic a lot, uh, which slightly depresses me sometimes. And all those hours you're wasting in the Mantan booth, making yourself like this gorgeous yeah, colour. well, you know, unfortunately we are sponsored by um, a particular um, self tanning company uh, so I managed to go up there quite a lot actually I'm sort of into that at the moment mm. and I hate you for it what's this thing you're drinking uh, this is uh, apple orange ginger um, uh, with a thing called spirulina which has a seaweed base to it it, it looks, looks disgusting it looks green um, it actually doesn't taste that bad because you can't really taste the green spirulina stroke uh, seaweed in it but um, I've so far managed to avoid anything that resembles um, a, a flu-like symptoms. Although this week, it's the only time I'm starting to feel slightly a bit clammy in the ears and, you know, a bit like, mm, something's going on. You need a week in Barbados, that's what it is. I'm about a week off from going to Barbados <laughs> for a week. All right, let's get back to you, because I tried to get you last year for the book, and they said, no, they said, you're not important enough to talk to Jason Donovan. What's wrong with me? In the pecking order of all the people you spoke to, why was I not good enough? I don't control the press and the publicity side of things. Um, all I can say to you is I try and get around this to as many people <laughs> as I can, because I'm one of the few artists that does believe in, in self-promoting and publicity. I think it's a very important ingredient. There is no point having the most wonderful piece of art or commercial entity and not be prepared to go out there and sell it there's there's absolutely no point to me um so you know um i'm sorry again this is twice it's all right we'll move on I, i'm going to forgive you on both occasions your life is interesting and so fascinating to me as a deeply unattractive person because you've always had you do have a complex about this i have because when i'm in the room with someone like you i see how ladies react as i follow you through a building and there's kind of an aura about you that they're curious me skid mark on a hotel towel well, I'd hate to see your underpants, but I'm sure there's more than a skid mark on those. It is a blessing, though, in life, isn't it, when you go through and people like you immediately? It's a funny question that you're throwing up because that, that sort of, you know, <laughs> genetically I was born with what I was born with, you know, and one could argue that there is discriminative um, um, things that happen if you are blonde-haired and blue-eyed and there's certain elements to life which, you know, make that quite difficult, you know, particularly looking at your 20s when you're trying to be taken seriously. It's only now when I've started to recede a little and I've got a little few lines under my eyes and a bit of a beard that people actually go, you know what, we can sort of start taking him seriously. But life isn't just about the way you look. It's what's inside. And we, uh, and uh, I've been reminded of that very recently on a number of occasions um, you know and and look I'm a, I, I've been doing this business for 20 25 years um, I'm still here I'm still in business I must be doing something right even though I have to say I do doubt myself you know I'm like everyone else you know I have insecurities and you know days that are ups and downs but 
you know what? If you ask me, I, I'm I'm I love my life. I have two great children. I have a great wife. Uh, I have a profession that I'm constantly learning about and you know challenges me it, it's not you're not one of these people that sits there and takes the job because it's easy I, I'll take the job if it's going to stress me out a little bit and I think that's important in life because it's very easy for all of us whatever profession just to sit back and take the check at the end of the week it really is when you're at your top mm. something clicks and you self-destruct why do you think that is when you're at the top of your game and so talented and creative that that sometimes happens well we always want to we all want to be something we're not sometimes and my my the sort of sadness of maybe my my um, 90s um, craziness was really I was trying to be cool and actually you know if I if I look at myself in that loincloth and a pair of white fluffy socks and wearing Joseph coat earning an extortion amount of money in an Andrew Lloyd Webber show at the Palladium I, I don't know why I was even thinking what I was thinking at the time but but there is a natural rebellious quality in any sort of success I think to want to to um, you know, and creativity. You know, business is a very more sort of structured thing. Creative people work in different sort of ways, and and I do see myself as creative. Um, the bottom line of it is, though, you know, I like drugs. Unfortunately, at that time, and that destroyed um, any self worth that I had. And you know, I, I basically, um, you know, sort of spent too much time, you know, enjoying myself on stupid substance abuse when actually if I'd sort of balanced my life a little bit more I probably would have come through it a bit quicker. However, I don't regret things because life is too short um, and you know the plus side for me is I'm here talking about it having not snorted a line of cocaine for many many years um, and I got through it. I'm a lucky one. How do you think it is possible to get that line right where you're at the top of your game, you're happy and everything's perfect without overstepping it? It seems like there's something in show business that doesn't parallel the two. Well, nothing is ever perfect. And, and, and what you read in Hello! magazine and Now and Heat, you know, is a glossy picture of what looks glamorous, but we all have our demons and we all have our ups and downs and, you know... You know, Robbie Williams talks about going out in Nebworth, you know, to 75,000 people at the top of the game, you know, hating it, you know, because he's scared that, you know, paranoia sets in. So nothing is ever quite what it seems. Um, um, and no one is immune. I don't care how successful. Look what Michael Jackson, you know, those sort of scenarios. Um, I, that's pretty much the straight and tall of the answer. Um, you know, I think some people are more honest about where they're going and others aren't I, I find honesty a far more um, a, 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 a much easier way to cope with life than than trying to hide and I've got into trouble for that before you know are you okay now with being judged because let's face it when the curtain goes up eight times a week I'm sat there judging you I'm going to mm -hmm. decide immediately whether you're good enough for me to sit there for the rest of the show how do you come to terms with that because there's no other business like it where your every word is being judged the judgment is the theatre is packed. That sort of says to me that things are working, um, and that's not an egotistical way. You know, something is right. You know, it's the combination of me, Tony, Oliver, the show, the production, the people behind me. You know, for every person out there doing it, there's a team of people making us look good, as long as you can sort of translate and, and deliver the good. Um, but you know what? I enjoy my work and it is important that I, I get the self-gratification and, and to have a success like Priscilla is really nice for me because, you know, I've been working hard and, and not everything works, you know. You know, you put out a record, it, it doesn't work as much as, you know, you million seller down the road. There's only one way when you're at the top to go down. Um, what 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 is important to me is is again you know my family and you know my situation at home um, and the people that are really close around me. Um, but yeah, a little moment of success now and again sort of helps the, the morale, keeps the troops going a little bit. You know, makes Daddy sort of a nice guy to sort of be on holiday with rather than sort of anxious. And um, you know, I think Priscilla has has been that for me and. You know, I think I, I firmly believe if you keep sticking at something in your life, you know, you start to do get rewards for things after a while, and people start to take you seriously, and 
you know, whatever that means. Testament to your dedication is the fact you do eight shows a week. I speak to most of the stars in the West End and they don't do eight shows. Why don't you ask to do five? I probably will. <laughs> the truth be known, coming next contract. But uh, whether they want that or not, that's that's their choice. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I do do eight shows a week. Yeah, I have a massage two days a week. Um, you know, I, I'm yeah, I'm 41. I'm pretty fit. I feel that the sort of all right. Don't go on about game. it. Yeah. What is all this about your physicality? Oh, well, it's the same insecurities you have when you watch me on stage. <laughs> you're sitting in your chair worrying about all your girlfriends around you trying to take you seriously. I don't know. And I, how much does the masseur pay to actually get a hold of this? I pay her, <laughs> uh, but she's bloody good. I want to just talk very finally about this musical, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, which is incredibly camp, and you're playing a gay man. Mm. How do you do it so well? I mean, you're, you're very proficient at have it. Have you seen it? Why would I sit here for 20 I minutes talking to you if I haven't seen it? I didn't it. know whether you had or not. But I, you're I, telling I me people shoot. would actually come and sit with you and not see Some it. people don't. Some people don't, you know. Some people, you know, would, would interview and you don't don't necessarily see it. Um, uh, the camp side of it, I was brought up by gay people all my life. You know, this business is surrounded by <laughs> campness. The the true the true art of tick and stroke mitzi is the balance between not being too gay because you know everyone can mince around and you know oh you know that's easy. But it's the balance between being camp but not being over the top camp because remember this character you know swings a little bit and has a child you know um, and that part of his life is very serious so um yeah that's a balance you have to try and find i suppose the hard thing for you is you've come from joseph which was a stupid musical let's face it a good musical but a stupid musical and this again has moments of stupidity in it where you've got to be so uplifting is it easy to do brecht and harold pinch every night where you can come in in a bad mood and get away with it um well i haven't done many many straight plays but i did a play called festin in australia which is you know a pretty serious play um, I find acting a lot easier than singing. Um, you know, you know, uh, we all act because you know. However, some of us just can't do it on stage because of a confidence factor. Um, you know, I think to sing comes from another part of the body. You, you're far more susceptible to how you're feeling emotionally, physically, mentally, um, and it's you know. It's an instrument, um, you know, and instruments are vulnerable. Um, you know, you can sort of, unless you lose your voice, you could pretty much act your way through anything, you know. So um, I actually find this more stressful, uh, yet more uh, exhilarating when it finishes and when it's completed. But you dance, you sing, you act. You know, it's the whole the whole gamut. And yes, eight shows a week is 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 uh, is is a whole currency within itself. Congratulations on being you and the success here at Priscilla Queen of the Desert, which is tremendous. And good luck with the radio show and all that business. Lots going on, and the books out as well. People can still get that. I don't really like you, but but it's nice to talk to you. Oh well, thank you. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. But you've never had that at the end of an interview. No, <laughs> Jason Donovan. Thanks so much. Okay. <laughs>